Half seven on a Thursday, which means it's time to talk to John Giles. Good evening, John. Evening, Nathan. I know uh, over in England it's a bit more difficult to get the uh, Ireland games at the moment, but you managed to catch some of it last night against Latvia, uh, all in the build-up to this huge game against France on Monday night. Uh, Evan Ferguson, 18 years old, scoring goals for club, scoring goals for country. You throw him in on Monday night? Oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> it's, I think it's Ray McCoy, uh, Nathan. I oh, haven't yeah? seen that much of him, but what I've seen of him I really like. Good attitude, good skill, big lad as we see, uh, but very, very nimble, good on his feet. Now, I think he's, uh, he's going to be brilliant for us, Nathan. I'm not going to say uh, he's going to get to Liam Brady's level, but uh, who knows, but I, I know you had no doubts when Brady was starting out of throwing him in at the deep end. Uh, no, none at all. Uh, um, I, I, there was always the thing in football that international football was different to league football. Uh, and I must be honest now, I never subscribed to that. It's a game of football, Nathan, you know? And, and I think what happens to a lot of lads who go into the international, international match and it's a bit too much for them, mm. you know? Uh, and, and I've seen that happen, young lads. But if, if, if the players have the ability and the temperament, uh, which Liam had, you know, I did, I did, I did see him playing for Arsenal uh, Actually, I played against him, I think, before, <laughs> before I picked him for the international team. And I wasn't much picking with Liam. He was just a natural. Yeah. But uh, it took to water right, when he played. No it, problem it was still the, It was the Soviet Union you gave him his debut against, uh, which turned out to be one of the great Irish victories. Like There is a similarity there that this is France, arguably the best team in the world, despite losing the World Cup final, that there would still be a seen as something of a risk to throw an 18-year-old into a game like that. But it worked with Brady. Maybe it'll work on Monday night. Yeah, it, it's worked with the with the with the top players, yeah. Nathan, over the years. I mean, I, I have seen it, and it did become part of football. That uh, you know, it's it's it, it, international as foot, uh, football is different to uh, league football, and I never I never found that with the players that had the ability and the temperament to do it. I mean, when I remember when Liam played at him first of all, because I, I I they used to have the tip off in those days. And uh, I think it was uh, John Gibbons who might have tipped it me. And I knocked it back straight to uh, Liam, just to get him into the game straight away, which he did. There was, there was no problem for him. And I've seen other players, young players, Nathan, who have the ability. And I've seen older players coming into it in league football, really, really good. And then they get into international teams and they don't have the temperament for it. It can happen. But there's, in my opinion, there's no difference between... Uh, league football and international football. You're playing on the same pitch, you're playing with the same ball, uh, and if you're good enough and have the temperament like Liam had and other players, then it's it's not a problem. We're all getting incredibly excited about Evan Ferguson, even looking at the quality of the goals he scored for Brighton in the Cup at the weekend. And we've had a few of the Irish players on the show over the last week and we've you know, been asking them, are they excited to have a player of this talent coming through? Because it's been a while since Ireland have had a, a Premier League quality striker. Do players get excited when they see a young kid like that come through and who is natural and a natural fit for the level? They love it. <laughs> they love it, Nathan. You know, you, you, you can't be the ability and the temperament to go and do it. And, and then the age doesn't matter, you know, because they say some lads are so young they don't realise what they're getting into or what they're doing. But most of them do, Nathan. You know, and they're Usually at that age, it, it, it's because they have the ability that they're, they're so good. And then the next thing is the temperament, uh, you know. But this kid has played in, in, in the Premiership now for, for quite a few weeks and scored in goals, as we know. So he obviously has the temperament. There's no, there's no doubt about that. Uh, and it, it's, it's brilliant for us. We haven't anybody come along like, like this lad for a long, long time, Nathan. We needed a goal scorer. Well, everybody needs a goal scorer, but us particularly. And uh, I, I think he'll, he'll go all the way. Uh, Ireland conceded again last night a couple of goals from outside the penalty area. John Egan, the Irish defender, was saying they feel it's a bit freakish the amount of goals they're conceding uh, from outside the penalty area at the moment. It, it, that does feel the big worry going into this game that even though there's a lot of individually very strong defenders in this squad, that they are quite open at times. Um. Yeah, you have to stop that, Nathan. It's a, it's a hugely important uh, element of the game. Um, 
you know, it, 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 it's, it's mostly blocking the ball. Maybe they're back too far. Uh, maybe whoever is near the ball is leaving it for somebody else. It, this does happen. You know, I've heard it before myself. Come in and dress him. What, what were you doing? I was, I was Joe Bloggs. I was leaving it for the other Joe Bloggs. Uh, whereas you've got to have at least, uh, when they're going to have a shot at goals, try and get two trying to charge it down, Nathan. Mm. You know, it's, 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 they have to be made aware, uh, the defenders. And uh, I'm sure that's what Stephen is doing now, that anybody that looks like he's going to have a shot, go and attack it. You've nothing to lose in that situation, Nathan, you know. Because a lot of defenders also think, you know, because he's so far out and, uh, you know, he hasn't teed it up, you don't have to really block it, you know. Whereas it's, it's getting the... the, the state of mind of defenders, no matter who it is is going to have a shot. If two of us go, that's okay. Not, not None of us. We've got to block the shot, Nathan, you know? We have to do that. Any team, not not just the any team has to do that. Yeah. But it, it is a state of mind, you see. I've seen it with defenders myself playing. Uh, well, he's so far out, let him hit it. Hmm. And then, the, then it finishes up the top in the top corner, and it's too late then. You know, I think, yeah. the, like... John Terry was one of the, the, the great defenders I can think of who naturally did what needed to be done. If you look back on his career, I think back on anybody that's old enough to say he, he was always the one that was blocking the ball. He was always the one that was making the charge and, and blocked it time after time after time. So we've got to get that in the Irish team now. Yeah. Uh, it's a huge game uh, on Monday night against France uh, a team we've no shortage of history against I think it's fair to say yeah we've had uh, a lot of battles with France over the years yeah Nathan. you had a couple yourself we did we beat them at, uh, at Lansdowne Road and, and, and we were robbed in, in I think it was Paris we played in Paris yeah I think Liam, Liam Brady went, went to the end line in the match and, and knocked it back you know and Frank Stapleton got a header a good header again in and he was ruled offside you know, there was there was a lot of lot of uh, dodgy dodgy decisions that we 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 had in those days because I think that there wasn't an awful lot of uh, they didn't sort of do every match, Nathan. You know, tape every match, so you were you were isolated once you went away. Uh, Bulgaria was the the worst place a lot. Bulgaria was a disgrace. You know, we 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 played there. I think I scored a goal, and I know in, in, in back in back home. They, they ran over the goal about 15 times and could find nothing wrong with it. And Bulgaria were, were notorious for um, getting home home wins, Nathan, with, uh, with the referees. Mm. And a lot of them, well, there was a lot going on in those days, unfortunately. And we, 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 we were on the end of it. If, if more, I don't remember any team at Lansdowne Road being robbed, Nathan. It was only when you went away. When we went away, we got a we got a few of them. Yeah, and uh, you know they were they were vital vital ones. I mean, the one in Paris was a was a, a dreadful situation. A dreadful situation. Yeah, you had a bit of it with Leeds as well, I think. We had it. I definitely had it in the European Cup final, yeah. uh, which was, by the way, my last match for Leeds. So yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't a good it wasn't a good end. Uh, that was that was Beckenbauer and his team. That there was something odd about that too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we'll we'll talk plenty next week about um about Ireland France and we'll get a, a good sense of where this group are at the moment. I yeah. want to talk to you about Antonio Conte and uh, his rather remarkable rant at the weekend against the Tottenham players and um, I think it's fair to say uh, questioning them as uh, footballers, questioning their motivations, uh, questioning it seemed everybody in the club. Could you believe what you were hearing? Uh, no. I can, I, I, you know, I think when any manager does that, and I have a great respect for him, I think it's obvious that, that what he was saying was to get out of the club, to call it a day, or either he was going to call it a day, but certainly the, the, the club itself, Levy had to call it a day. You can't have a manager uh, speaking like that about his players. You know, selfish team, lacked heart. I mean, these, these are two of them. Dreadful things you can say about players. No heart and being selfish in, in, in the game. Right? And he, he's an experienced manager, an experienced person in the, in the game. 
No, he knows he can't say things like that and uh, everything being okay. I'd, I'd be amazed if he's, if, he's, uh, if he's not sacked by the end of this week. It, it certainly seems to be heading that way. Was there any part of what we were saying true, though, that you look at where Tottenham are, you look at the lack of success that they've had uh, in terms of winning trophies over recent years, that there is something within their character that, that means they don't have it to get to the next level? I, I don't think it's their character, uh, Nathan, to be honest. I mean, if, if you look at uh, Spurs and the amount of money they've spent in relation to, to all the other clubs, Chelsea, Manchester United, Manchester City, they're way down there. And I, I, I think what Conte has done at uh, Spurs has been a big job with what he's had. You know, there's, there's no big, really big sign. Well, they, they got the lad from Everton. Uh, he's not in the team. Uh, but if you look at the rest of the players that he bought, mm. I mean, they're not on the high side uh, in terms of the, the millions that other clubs are spending, Nathan. Really aren't. You know, I mean, when Pochettino was there, he did a great job for them. You know, getting them into the European Cup and all that, or the Champions League. But he, he, he didn't have any money. If you look at Spurs over the, I mean, if I asked you to, to, to name me, say, five or six players, top-class players, expensive players, Nathan, from Spurs, would you be able to do it? Uh, probably not that they've signed. Certainly not that have been a success. Well, yeah, but they, 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 they haven't signed. No, I can't think uh, of any that's mm. really, really expensive players. You know, the, that the players that Manchester United, City, uh, Chelsea are signing now... Um, you know, I, I can't remember them buying that. Oh, now, this is going back over 10 years where they've been a high spender. And all the managers that have been there have always said, can't get the money out of them to do it. I mean, Conte has said it himself. So, uh, you know, the, the, like this, I don't think he was right to say what, the way he said it. Mm. I think if he wants to leave, he could, he could do it without uh, getting at the players. I don't think it was fair on them. I can't see it. Any time I see them, they're having a go. But surely he must, yeah, he must have to take responsibility as well because they're 3-1 up against Southampton and all the post-match mm. analysis has shown they just drop deeper and deeper and deeper. And while he might put that on the players, surely as a manager, that's up to him and his coaching staff to get them up the pitch a bit more, stop inviting trouble onto them. As much as you can say, where's the fight, where's the character, where's the heart? Actually, tactically, he let them down in the last 20 minutes of that game. Oh, he, he has to be responsible. I mean, when all said and done, he's the manager, Nathan. And I think he couldn't take it. They were winning 3-1 and they lost. They, sorry, they drew 3-3. Uh, but I, I'm amazed at him doing what he's doing. I think he's been a great pro. I think he's been a great manager over the years. And to, to, to pick on the players the way he did, I think was totally wrong. And I think it's just to get away that he's using the players in this particular way, which I'm surprised at him. And if he wants to go, just go. Mm. Tell the manager, the, the, the chairman or whoever, I've had enough. I'm not getting the backing, so I'm leaving now. But to pick on the players, I think, is, uh, is, is very, very bad form. Very uh, bad form. Matt Doherty was talking earlier in the week. He's obviously left Spurs now, but said that you know, Conte would never say anything in public that he wouldn't say to the players' faces. And yeah. did This did feel like something he mightn't have said to the players, but if he has spoken to them in this way about how he feels about them, does that make it more acceptable that actually you know, he's, he's fronting up to the players saying, you're not up for the fight. You, you don't deserve to finish any higher with the way that you approach the game. Well, it, it, it's okay if you say it privately. You can say what you want privately, Nathan, in the mm. dressing room. You know, you can say you're a rubbish lot and the way you're going like that, you won't, we won't win anything. Down. That's between you and the players. Nobody knows that, you know. But if you go out and you, and you give a, a press conference slating the players, that's when it's totally wrong. Yeah. You can't do that. And if you, he's, he's an experienced guy. He knows when he does, if and when he does that, which he did. It's the end. You never get the players back again, Nathan. You know, you go, they, they're going to be playing again on Saturday or Sunday, whenever it is. Now he's, he's with them. OK, lads, let's go. We're a bunch together. We're all in it together and all that. That's gone. He knows what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. And if you want to give the players a rally going over, I mean, every, every player goes through that. I was with Don Reeve, Matt Busby. Get a right going over mm. in the dressing room after a match where you haven't done your stuff. Right? But nobody else knows about it. In this situation, even the players didn't know 
till they read it in the paper, what he was saying. Yeah. He probably didn't even give them a telling off after the match. He probably walked out of the dressing room, went straight to the press guys, and did something that you, you just cannot do with players. Because ultimately, uh, you know, he's been there now long enough. He's responsible for those players now, Nathan. If they're not trying, if they're not doing this, if they're not that, he's the manager. He's responsible for it. And I think the players were shocked, to be quite honest. I mean, don't forget, Harry, Harry Kane was, was part of that group. Mm. Is he involved in that? And there's lots of other players I've seen for Spurs, playing for Spurs now, that uh, they don't know, know anything else but having to go. I uh, want to get your thoughts on Leeds, John, because they're obviously still in the relegation fight. It's so close at the bottom, it's incredible. Four mm. points separating the bottom nine teams, but Leeds got a massive win last weekend, uh, 4-2 away against Wolves. Uh, new manager Avi Grazia has come in. Are you feeling more confident about chances of survival since he replaced Jesse Marsh? Yes. Yeah. I, I, think, that they're, 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 I think they are what they are, Nathan. Like most teams at the bottom, they're not going to be consistent. But of the teams that I've seen around them at the bottom, I think they've they've got more than them. Mm. I think they'll get goals. I mean, they're, they're liable to, to lose goals as well. But I think they'll have enough go in them to get out of trouble. Yeah, it's interesting when you talk about goals, you look at the stats uh, all the way down. And I think Leicester have 38 goals, Leeds have 35. And nobody else has more than 25 goals. So yeah. the nine teams down there, Leeds certainly have the firepower, and the fact Rodrigo's back fit again, uh, you would expect that that'll be enough of them. I think so. I think I think it'll be tight. I don't think they'll be consistent in the run in. I don't think they'll be consistent, but I think they'll be more, more consistent than the, the the teams around them. You know, I think Forest are still in big big trouble. Well, everybody knows that. Yeah. Everybody down there, but I, I have a feeling that Forest might go. Uh, were you surprised to see? Patrick Vieira sacked and Roy Hodgson back 75 well the way it happens in the game now uh, Nathan nothing surprises you you know mm. I think I think he's had a bad time like a lot of uh, uh, he, like they're in a better team than not, quite a few of the teams down there they can't score but, any goals but, but uh, you know they're not scoring goals Nathan, but, but uh I think they've been unfair on him. I don't think he's. I, I think managers deserve to go if the club has spent a lot of money uh, and they're not doing it and they're down at the bottom. Like I think you say, well, that's his, they, they've given him a go. But I don't. I can't remember the last time he bought a player. Mm. I, I, I think it's. I think it's. Uh, but it, it, it's so desperate, Nathan. You know, for relegation, the, the clubs. Are, oh God, if we're relegated, it and it really, really gets to them. And I think that's what happened to to um, uh, to, to Vieira. They, they, they thought because of panic, 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 uh, and now they've got uh, uh, um, our man in again. He's, he's amazing, isn't he, Nathan? Yeah, it is remarkable uh, the desire he has to just stay in the game. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's incredible, and, and and the career he's had. You know, he he must have had about twenty jobs all around the world. Yeah. You know, and, and had some of those. He managed at Liverpool at one stage. Yeah, he was, yeah. Didn't go too well. No, no, no. Uh, the England no, job didn't amazing, go too well either. It's amazing, though. I think Fiera has been ha- badly treated. Like a lot of the managers down there, uh, uh, Nathan. They're not given a chance, you know. There's panic. Uh, I mean, there's about... I think I, I just did it in the paper the other day. There were nine players, uh, sorry, nine teams mm. that were separated by five points. So there'll be nine teams in the relegation battle, you know. Yeah. It's huge, and, and there's what two or three managers gone already. So they do a lot of the clubs, in my opinion, panic that, that the, the thought of, of, of being relegated frightens them, and they get rid of the manager straight away. I try to. Uh, John, we got to leave it there. Great stuff as always. Okay, Nathan, thanks. John Giles with you every single Thursday here on Off the Ball. If you missed any of that, just get on to the OTB Podcast Network. OTB Football, you get all our football podcasts. You get John Giles, you get John Egan there today, Dan McDonald as well, and all the reaction and build up uh, to the Republic of Ireland's huge games. We're going to take a quick break.